All right, welcome to the channel. Now I know what you're thinking, or I've, I've told you, right? You can record all your clips straight to your phone. Now, once you get them on your phone, what are you gonna do with them? How are you gonna edit them? How are you gonna get them up to YouTube? Now you could just directly upload clips to YouTube from your phone, that's possible. It's actually saved me this past week when I didn't have any uh, electricity. So we didn't have power here or no internet and I could not upload from my computer, which I normally do. I actually edited on my phone and iPad and then I had it on the phone and I directly uploaded it over 5G from the phone. So like, yeah, you can, that's probably one of the tips is you can upload directly from your phone. And that came in clutch when I didn't have Wi-Fi. I was able to, since I edit everything on my phone and iPad, I used my phone to upload that to my channel. So that saved me last week. So that's, you know, one way to do it. Editing apps are actually really good if you know which ones to get. Now, I will say a lot of them started doing subscriptions and I hate that. So I'm not gonna mention any of the ones that do subscriptions. I might mention a couple, but I'm not gonna tell you to get those. The ones I'm gonna get are one-time fees or you can use the free features. So these are gonna be my top three editing apps that you can use on your phone or tablet. And from there, you know, export it and then upload it if you need to. That's how I started. All right, and just to, to show you really quick on my phone, I do use the editing app here as well. Uh, Vlogstar is my uh, choice of editor. Super simple, you do have all the intro makers, thumbnail makers, you got kits if you want a certain style and channel art. I did my channel art in here and then they have little tools to help you kind of know what keywords to use and all that. I don't take advantage of everything, but it is, you know, everything's on the app as well. So you can start a new project or you can go to your work. Now I do a lot of clips here too for social media. So in uh, Instagram, TikTok, a lot of those videos are going to be edited here first and then posted on there. So if we go, you know, I do all my little podcast clips here. I take a screen recording of my video, put it up here, add music, add overlays, add my podcast logo at the top. And you can see it's, it's pretty simple. I'm just cutting out any uh, sections I don't want, make it all cohesive. And then you have all the access down here. So all of this can be done on your phone. And when I started all my full length YouTube videos, you know, whether, whether they were five, 10, 20 minute long videos, they were all done in or on my phone. So like, you know, we go in here, let's look at a one I did for Vito. So, you know, all these little effects, so if we play it, there's gonna be music playing in the background. I do have my logo up there. You know, I take my own shots. That's a little FX effect here. We have a couple of them that go through or that show up. Those are those little uh, zoom. There's a glitch there for transitions. And then it's all like, you know, angles and, and how you wanna put your video together, cutting out Especially for social media and TikTok, you know, cutting out all the dead space, dead air, and making it, as you can see here, there's a bunch of cuts, and you can, uh, you know, zoom in. A bunch of jump cuts to make sure that we're not wasting, uh, you know, the viewer's time, because they're going to be scrolling. If this is on social media, Instagram, TikTok, if they don't seem, <clears throat> seem interested, they're going to click off the video really quick. So you gotta make sure it's fast paced or you know whatever style that you get into. All right, so here we are on my editor of choice. I just switched to an iPad because uh, it'll be easier, way easier to show you. And if, if you want to level up, you know, you can get yourself a tablet or you can uh, use a computer. I'll, I'll mention, you know, my top three and some honorable mentions because everybody's gonna be different. I'm just trying to show you that you can do this on a phone or tablet. In my case, it's gonna be an iPhone or an iPad. So I'm gonna go, and uh, also a pencil is a big you know, tip of the day there. Um, this has helped me do so much with precision 
on cutting and you know syncing up music and all that kind of stuff so uh, if you want to level up an ipad and this is not a special ipad or anything this is like a, a couple years old it's a an ipad air it's not the newest one it's it's the one before and i was using it for a couple of years and it's worked out great so we go here sync it up first so we go here these are all the projects i've done i'm currently uh switching over to an ipad pro because they had a deal on them at best buy um, and I'm trading this in. So I, I upgraded to this. And you know, if you are monetized and making money off your content, all this stuff come tax season, you know, you can add this uh, to your uh, deductibles, get some credit back. So that's all tax purposes. You know, we'll go over that at a later time. But if I go in here, you know, these are all my projects. I don't keep everything on here because it takes up a whole lot of space. I went from, uh, this is a 256 which does enough if I'm offloading every week or every two weeks because I record in 4K. Uh, so I would advise you to record in 1080p and you can choose between 30 to 60 frames. The more frames, the better, especially if you're slowing down stuff or when you're trying to mash up different clips together. Uh, I export in 30 frames per second just to keep it all unified or to cover my grounds, but uh, I record in 60, but you can do 30 or 60. It'll tell you on the iPhone, like the different, the differences in size, as far as like file size, in case you're uh, wondering about that. But I record in 4K, so I need a lot of memory. This was 256. I upgraded to 512. All right, so let's just go to the last project that I have on here. And like I said, as you can see, there's gonna be a lot of layers to this. And I actually took off some stuff that I need to add back. But so we got here, we got my music. You can do, you can add music. So when you go to add music, you know, you have, te you can add text, you can add stickers. Uh, sound is where you would add your music. Uh, you can add pictures and pictures, FX effects, filters, which I do use so that it's not so bland. If you want a, a representation of that, let's go to filter. So if I, you can kind of see that it's it's pretty colorful. I'm going to try and leave this unedited on this video and then I'm, that way you can see the difference in the colors. So that's pretty blue. Everything's a little saturated and contrasty. Now if I touch this, it shows what it was before and after. So I just I like to add color to it, not too much, and then I like to darken like my blacks and my dark colors so that there's contrast. So that's the difference there. I use filters. I do have a list of favorites down here, but that's it. You go here. I have a little intro card that I use. I try to keep that quick and simple. I'm considering getting rid of it as well, just so I don't lose people if I'm, if that is too long, but that's why I keep it really, really short. Mine is only four and a half seconds long. So transition to that. And then it goes into a little montage here. So you know, it depends on your style, depends on how you want to do things, but you can do all of this in the app. So on these, I think I sped up these different ones. So like once you click on a clip that you want to edit, you can uh, crop and rotate it, all that. Uh, changing the speed is what I did on these. So let me lower this down. You can see that I raised it to about four and a half times. And if you want to preview it, you just hit the play button. So that's sped it up. That way it's not a super long clip or a montage. And then uh, I wanted to keep speeding up and then slow down. You know, I had some birds or seagulls coming through. So I took this clip or I cut this part where they're flying in and I slowed that down. That way it's, that was real time. It was only at one uh, speed, but get that kind of vibe and then go back into speeding through this little driving part. And then when I'm gonna talk, like my music, uh, you have different options on, on music. You can edit to the beat, uh, and then simple like cut, copy. Um, if I go to volume, I already know from experience that I can go between 25 to 40 comfortably. Depends on the music. If the music is very busy and loud, then I 
try to tone it down a little bit on the volume. I never leave it at 100%. So tone, you can tone that down here to a considerable level. I use earphones when I'm editing my videos. So if it's comfortable enough for me when I'm going between or through the whole video from me talking to the music, if it's comfortable, then I'm fine. As soon as I, I find a part where, where I talk and as soon as I start talking, if I still want music to play in the background, like I said, from experience, I already know that I need it between three and uh, usually no more than six or seven percent right here. So when I'm talking, I have to cut it. That song is it's going all the way through, but then I cut that uh, song right here and then I lower the music. And then when it's done, and you can zoom in and out on this, when it's done, like right here, I'm gonna fade it out. It does a quick fade, there's no, that's the only bad thing is you can't adjust the time that it fades in or out, it's, it does it on, on its own, so, you know, there's that. So then we get into our video. I have another montage here with some more music. And then you can also do, because I work in restaurants, this was a, another company and I, I didn't want to show who they were or where they were from, their number, anything like that. Just because this is a public video that goes up to YouTube. So you can also blur out certain sections. Um, I don't think you can keyframe this, but like it was stationary. So I just blurred out that section there. Uh, they also have stickers here. So you can go into the uh, sticker section and you're going to have tons of stickers here. So it's normally updated, but the, for the most part, what you see is what you get. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of categories. So you're going to have stickers for days. You're going to, you can favorite, you know, the ones you want to. I haven't done that yet. I usually just go to the subscribe section and this is where they're going to have like thumbs up. Let's see, thumbs up, subscribe. These neon ones are pretty cool. Uh, you know, all these animated ones. And most of them are going to be animated and vlogging, you know, there's phone icons, recording, vlog, check marks. Uh, those are all the stickers. If you need arrows, there's stuff that points, you know, all that. So you have a, a ton of options there to put stuff on the screen. This is also keyframed to follow that piece of equipment. So if I go through it, you know, we're following it, we're zooming in. And uh, you can do that with this product, I mean this uh, editor as well. Of course you have your transi transitions. I mostly use, I keep it simple, I mostly use fades. If I need to do a quick swipe, I'll do that too. So if we go here, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's just a fade there. Fade into the next one, you know, stuff like that. I mostly use the fades for a uh, little time jump. So if I'm doing something and then I jump out to the van or to a different location, I, I'll use a fade or if time has passed, I'll use a fade. Try not to overdo the transitions. There's times where that can get a little uh, distracting. So we don't try to use those too much. And here's text. I, I, I'm pretty simple on the text. I can, I do get cr creative with it when I can because you can do uh, transitions and different styles but this one was just a simple pop-up and then in this text you know you find a font that you like you have a ton of fonts to go through right find one that you like I, I i generally use the same like two or three fonts then you have all this customization on this little bar right here so uh they have you know some preset ones if you just want to pick one from here but you pick the font you pick the color. They do have textured fonts too. So you can pick some that are multicolored. I use that one a lot too, like the little orange and yellow. Um, they have rainbow, they have different ones. I try to keep it simple and I make sure that it's legible from a phone or a TV because people watch it on different devices. You can also use these that fill in the background. And then uh, you can curve it if you need to. These are text bubbles mostly, little uh, stuff that you can have pop out that go around it. This is your line alignment. So if you need it to be 
on the right, on the left. I mostly do it in the middle. Probably have to take off the curve to show you everything else. So then uh, you can expand the text. And then this would be, uh, line would be like if, it, if you have multiple lines, if you want to space them out up and down. So there's all that. There's animations. Like on this one, I didn't use them. But you can fade it in. You can make, make it come out in different directions. Zoom in. Zoom out. Whatever. Uh, if you need a dramatic effect, you know, you can do those. And then there's one overall. I mainly use this when I'm watermarking my stuff. I don't really like this for text because I want people to read the text that's on the screen. But you can have it doing all sorts of crazy things like... That right there looks like a neon sign, right? So you can do a, maybe a subscribe button just from the text and make it fancy and, and customize it to what you want. So we'll get out of there. Uh, you can also, let's put this back to something normal. Uh, there's the stroke, right? You want a thick stroke. You don't want any, but you want to make sure that it stands out. Uh, shadows, I like to have shadows on mine. So you can uh, kind of play with it. So you can kind of see it coming up there around. It's a red. And then, or let's make it blue. Change what direction it's going in and then how, how strong it is. So you can have a little drop shadow if you want. You can have the highlight in the back, fills in the space. You can also uh, 3D affect it, which basically turns it left or right, like if you're seeing it from the side. Same thing up and down. A lot of cool things you can do with this. Oh, we also have these uh, titles that look kind of cool. So whenever I do something where I'm coming back, I usually use this little animation right here. And there's a lot of them that I use. So if we play it, it comes out as a, like a computer text. They have a whole bunch of stuff here. So these are the ones that I have in my favorites. I think you guys have seen this one. If you're coming from my main channel, like, comment, subscribe. That's just, you know, plug and play. You have some that you can edit. This one has the uh, subscribe button being clicked. And you can put your picture and your name in there. You know, you have all these to choose from. And then these are just the ones that I favorited. So like popular, you can, you can see how many titles and text you can have um, for social media as well. If you just want, if you have one or two, you can have uh, that come out on the screen, you know, so that they know to follow you like on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. Fire text, different text that comes out. They have some for shopping. And these are just the recommended ones. You have all this menu up here to go and look through. So if I click on any one of them, there's going to be a whole bunch within that. So there's for quotes, lower thirds, the social media section. Like you can have your name uh, and your logo come out. Uh, there's a YouTube section. So if you want to have a subscribe button or something like that pop up, uh, there's also a shopping one if you guys are selling anything in your uh, videos you know they have all this stuff in here so again i have here an outro going out with music come in i tell people to like and subscribe i have that title that comes up then i just have an outro now these you can get in the in the app itself this this little background i didn't make it it came in the app all i did was add the text that says thanks for watching and check out these other videos. And when you put this on your YouTube or at the end of your video and it goes up to YouTube, in YouTube you can add um, for YouTube to put in automatically. You just have to pick the time, whatever timestamp that is. And then uh, it'll fill in like what they should watch next, which is usually one of your videos. And then this one would be your logo, which is your channel, to click it and subscribe. So that, that gets filled in by YouTube. You just have to have the, the template for it or the outline for it. And then once you do it once, 
and you know it's like on mine it's like the last nine seconds of it uh, once you do it once in YouTube it'll let you just every time you upload a video you can reuse your last setting so like if you have this at the end of every video then it's always going to populate in YouTube you just have to make sure you add it um, and it'll just automatically add it to the one like mine is nine, every nine seconds of the last video so it'll automatically do all that and I forgot to mention when you're adding clips it's this plus button right here so you can add clips from your photo library which is going to be this right here but you can also add from an external device so I use a uh, external hard drive with a lot of my stuff because I can't I can't leave everything here because it'll fill up the memory really quick so I always when I'm done editing I export everything to an external drive and you can actually pull up uh, hard drives here and you can actually let's say you just want to upload everything to the external hard drive first and then edit them later you can uh, pull the you know it'll show up here and you can pull it off without having to have it on your device it'll just pull it straight off because once it uploads it here it actually saves it or like a copy of it here and that's why these uh, are gonna take up memory as well you're kind of using double the size so like a lot of these are gonna be like that one's 11 gigs 7 gigs those are short videos 6 gigs 9 gigs because it's it's copying over and then they're gonna it's storing those files in the app locally so like when I'm done with something I do have to go in and uh, like delete it to get that memory back but you can pull from your photo library you can also pull from external hard drives which I really like that this one does and then also if you're gonna add music something that a, like Kapka doesn't even do this if you're gonna add uh, music here they have their own library you have sound effects as well I use a lot of their sound effects you can go in here and get little uh, dings and claps you know different things they have sound effects in here too uh, they do have music for vlogs and different things you can voice over if you need to and then you can go to my music now here I think if you save stuff it goes here like if you go to my music this is all the stuff that you saved so these are all the uh, sound effects I saved I don't use any other music currently and I import a lot of my music so I'll go in here and you know, these are music that I've used from different uh, free and now I'm using a paid one uh, epidemic sounds but you can go in here and get music and uh, add it with the plus button and then if you need to if you're downloading music because a lot of these websites that you use to get music you have to download it to your device it'll be in your files app as if you're using iOS all you do is go into import and you're gonna you can import from a drive if you have music on a drive if you download it on a computer instead you can also go to files and then pull off like here are all my music downloads pull it off from files and then import that here and then you have it you'll have it here in the list every time you go and make a video and that's an easy way to add music CapCut doesn't let you do this so this this app really does a lot and I really recommend this one for uh, social media this is where all the memes you know that I get from are they have a bunch of they have a meme section basically uh, so if you do social media this is a good one for that too but it's a pretty good basic software the only thing is this is one of those that has a subscription so a lot of the stuff is free but they do have a pro version so in the app itself you can start a new project and it's like anything you can uh, import anything from your photo library and get started there quickly template is a section that I'm talking about so if you go to template here at the bottom and then you type in let's type in Pedro Pascal he's a popular meme right now you have all of these memes that you can use and they're templates so you go in here and it's going to show you what it looks like and basically you're just using whatever I guess the green screen is whatever's in the background you're going to upload your own photo or video so a lot of these are ones that I've used and you can do that you export it you know you straight to TikTok Instagram whatever you whatever you're using uh, the only other good thing that this one has like I have a clip of me 
you know, driving out of a parking lot. If I want to go in here, one of the big features I use because I work outside a lot is this one called Reduce Noise. You do that and you turn it on. It takes out all that engine noise that was in the, the car. So you can kind of hear the difference there. That's with it off. That's with it on. And that's a free feature. You can use that as, as much as you want. I use it a lot when I'm outdoors and there's a lot of wind noise or like this, there's engine noise. That's a good, good one to use a uh, cap cut for. Also, let's try another feature that I like to use, which is called cutout. So we're gonna remove the background here. Uh, and you can see it removes everything in the back except you. So let's see. So you can uh, green screen yourself if you need to. And it does a pretty good job as long as it's a person and there's a, a significant background, right? It gets a little bit of my hat too, but that's pretty well done for you not having to go in there manually to do it. So those are the main two reasons I use it for. Oh, and if you're using CapCut, remember to go to settings and then add a default ending, turn that off. That way it doesn't say that, that um, at the end of the video, it won't say made with CapCut or whatever it says, like this part. I mean, you can delete it, but that's how you remove that. So honorable mention there, those are the two main things that I use this product, this one for, and I think you can even put makeup and stuff on yourself. Uh, where's that feature? Retouch. Face. Yeah, you can like smooth your face out. Yeah, if you need to, oh, you can whiten your teeth. What the hell? Okay, yeah, this, uh, those are free. The pro one is to remove smile lines, dark circles, and then something about evening out. But you can, for free, smooth out your face, brighten your face, and whiten your teeth. So CapCut has some cool features on there. It's a lot of like AI stuff. So that's what I use CapCut for mostly. And then the third one's gonna be iMovie. Now, if you have an iPhone, I believe you can also do this on Mac. Uh, use iMovie now it's I haven't used it in a while but I'm pretty sure it is still like a trailer movie trailer type of uh, app so I used to use it when I'm when I had my old uh, side business I made little trailers with it little montages with it it has cool little transitions and, and titles and, and, and that kind of tech stuff but I mean that's really where it stops I don't know if you can do you, you definitely can do everything that Vlogstar does and Vlogstar helps you do your thumbnails and, and all your channel art and, and different things. So iMovie is another good one if you just want a super simple one that's also free. It's free. You can get it on your iPhone. I think you can get it on your Mac uh, computers as well. iPad, whatever you have. And then, uh, you know, just clip some things up, put it together, and then upload a video. And if you're a little more tech savvy, you can use DaVinci Resolve. So this one is gonna be more like a full editing app that you would find on your desktop. So this one has, you know, all of this. I was messing with it a while ago, but I really have to dive into it and learn this stuff. But if you know how to like color grade manually and you're used to all this setup, uh, you can do DaVinci Resolve. That one, I'm, I'm gonna try and figure it out a little bit and maybe use it for, for color grading because I've had issues with color grading, but DaVinci Resolve is another good one and it's a free one as well. All right guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was helpful. Drop a like, help the channel out. Subscribe if you haven't yet and uh, leave a comment if there's anything else you want to know, you need help on, any gear you wanna know about. And yeah, I'll see you guys.